I know for a fact today's episode is gonna be awesome. I launched a ladies school first in Uzbekistan. Uh, wow, that's yeah, impressive. N- N- Nisa ladies school. Uh-huh. Yeah, my past was uh, so diverse. First, I started with sports. So, if it's not a secret, what was your first score? Yeah, dude, I actually been lately going out and talking to different people because to set up podcasts like this, I have to go and talk to guests. So we usually have meetups before yeah. the we shoot the podcast. So we go out to different places, talk and help? chat. Uh, so much, so much. I'm yeah, starting to I'm starting to realize there's more to life than teaching. Yeah, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What seems ideal to me, even in the future, is I'll be running my own school Mm -hmm. and I'll be taking groups whenever I feel like. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll be feeling like it like all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Not not many groups, but like two, three groups. That that's that's what I see as an ideal Mm -hmm. uh, like future. I'll be running Mm -hmm. my own school. I'll be running my other projects, but. Teaching should be a part of my my day, like every day, every term they use is sell your soul. Yes, you have to sell your soul to get more views. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Some people do that. Definitely. My philosophy here with content creation is, I don't want to make something my audience wants to see. I want to make something I want to see, and if they like it, so be it. If they don't like it, so be it. Round two, round three, round four. We're going to have a few more rounds with yeah. Mr. Behrouz, guys. Uh, yeah. Hey, folks. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Adustrian Muse. I'm your host, Muhammad Ali, here again. Today, we got another awesome guest in the house, and this person is my old friend. We've been actually friends for almost a decade now. He's been involved in teaching for some time. And you guys probably know this guy as well. And the person I'm talking about is Mr. Behruz Mukhtarov. Mr. Behruz, welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank you for inviting. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm so glad to have you here today. And I got a lot of questions I'd like to ask you. So I know for a fact today's episode is going to be Awesome. Hopefully. So let's get started. What do you say you tell our audience a little about yourself? So what are you busy doing these days? All right. Um, well, my main job is I'm, I'm a full-time IELTS instructor. Well, uh, and I run a cram school mm-hmm. called uh, The Hub that, that's uh, based in Tashkent. Uh, and then uh, I was involved in some like uh, administrative work for a while. Uh, I ran uh, a, com- a learning complex here in Bukhara. Uh, well, I think people living in Bukhara know it well. That's called uh, Al Bukhari. Uh, well, we had a kindergarten there. I started like uh, I was involved in in the process uh, of launching this this project back in 2021 or 20, 2020. Like I think there was 2021, and then. Uh, uh, I launched a ladies' school first in Uzbekistan. Uh, wow, that's yeah, impressive! N- N- Nisa ladies' school, uh-huh. uh, and then now, like, I'm a full-time uh, instructor. Mm-hmm. And I'm running my cram school, mm-hmm. and soon, mm-hmm. very soon, we're launching another project. Uh, and let's that's keep incredible. it secret for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'll announce that soon. Uh, but that's going to be a big project. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, that's that's also a part of like uh, education. Mm-hmm. Well, I cannot say that's uh, that's directly mm-hmm. uh, in in this field, but it has something to do with education as well. I see. So uh, before we dive into your projects and your career at the moment, what do you say we talk a little about your past? Uh huh. So what got you into English? Why did you take up English? Well. Um, yeah, my past was uh, so diverse. First, I started with sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spent almost six years. Uh, I took up a Taekwondo, uh, WTF, when I was around like four or five. Uh, and uh, they were like different colors of belts. Mm-hmm. Well, I think most people know about that. And mm-hmm. I went to the pre-last one that, mm-hmm. was, that was brown, I think. And the next one was black. 
And then at some point, um, well, I, I wanted to stop it. Like, I don't remember uh, all the details why I wanted to do so, why I gave up sport, but I asked my parents, that was enough, like that was it. Uh, well, I think I was 10 or 11 years then, years, years old then. Um, and then I took up uh, education in music. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I attended musical school for four years. Uh, that was quite a good experience. Mm -hmm. I learned how to play piano there. Can you still play a piano? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can play. Yeah, that's... I, have, I have one at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got so many talents. Like uh, sitting here listening to you talk about your childhood <laughs> makes me feel like a yeah. Well, I think <laughs> um, like naturally, I'm a person who wants uh, new challenges, mm -hmm. change uh, often because uh, after some time, like after four years of mm -hmm. studying at this at that school, uh, then I wanted another change, another challenge in my life, and then I started uh, English classes. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like starter or beginner level then. Um, and um, I started to attend the classes uh, with 18, like 19 year old applicants. First I learned grammar. And then um, as I aced it, as I mastered uh, the grammar part, uh, like I was like 15 or 16 years old and I wanted to dive deeper in it. And then I started IELTS classes uh, and then I took the first exam at the age of 16. And there was, uh, the first one was an unsuccessful attempt, but that was interesting. That was so interesting. So if it's not a secret, what was your first score? Yeah, first I got 6.5 uh -huh. with eight in reading. So did I. I also got 6.5 in my first attempt. So that makes the two of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> common. <laughs> uh, first uh, I got, yeah, like eight in reading, 6.5 in listening, and double six in writing and speaking. That's unbelievable. He still remembers his sub scores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it's been almost ten years, but he still remembers the sub scores yeah. of his uh, first IELTS score. Well, that's um, impressive. There was there was an unsuccessful attempt, and my uh -huh. my teacher also said like there wasn't my score, uh -huh. um, and he suggested to retake mm -hmm. the test as soon as possible, mm -hmm. and I uh, and I signed up for for the mm -hmm. next exam, uh, for the next exam. I got 7.5 overall, mm -hmm. that was 8.5 in reading, and then uh, 7.5 in listening, 6.5 in, no, 7.7 seven in, in mm -hmm. writing and speaking, yeah. yeah. That was right after the first attempt. And then uh, I was just 16, 17 years old, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like there was a kind of like inspiration, motivation for me. I can do something, I can learn this language well, I can take this, I could take this test well, uh, why not dive deeper in it? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I spent like two more years uh, like going to the cram school uh, and spending some time with my teacher, like almost all of my time with my teacher, because I wouldn't go to the college mm -hmm. uh, regularly. And then, yeah, I took, I got eight and then 8.5, Mm -hmm. And that was my journey, yeah. So it sounds like you spent most of your teenage years learning English. Yeah, yeah. 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 And did you take up any other subjects like math? Yeah. Or uh, mm -hmm. I took up math, um, but uh, I didn't like that because I spent a great portion of my teenage life, as you said, uh, studying English. And uh, they had already become a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Like... Um, I already had my like daily routine. Uh, I was in the third year of my college, I think, when I took up math, math courses. And uh, I attended the courses for like two or three months. I wouldn't say I was bad at math. Uh, I was pretty good because uh, my test scores showed that there was, there was uh, quite a good progress. Uh, I was progressing rapidly, but I don't know what, what kept me uh, away from it. Uh, I just like, didn't like the people there. I didn't like the uh, like program, or maybe I didn't like the way uh, how I was taught. That's why like, uh, I wanted to stop it. But still, I got like 60 something or 60 or 70 some, something uh, mm -hmm. in the entrance math exam. And I think that was that was mm -hmm. pretty good job, like in two months, mm -hmm. two or three months at most. And that was when your university life started. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Which 
actually brings me to my next question. I've been also meaning to ask you about your university life. So what do you say we reflect a little more on our past and talk about what life was like back then at university? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, um, uh, I wouldn't say that was a very good experience because if I had the chance, like mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, apply to the, to the same university again. And for the record, what university? It's Westminster University, yeah, it's, it's right? Wyatt, yeah. Wyatt. We <laughs> yeah, it's... actually both went to the same university. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. your major was different at the time, right? Yeah, my major was uh, business administration. Mm -hmm. I think you. No, I pursued economics, economics with finance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, um, but there is a huge overlap between our majors. Yes. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, the thing is. Um, well, they were more chances. They were uh, better opportunities for both of us, for mm -hmm. you and me. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, not staying in Uzbekistan. I mean, I don't know you, but uh, to me at the time, getting into Wyatt was like a dream come true. <laughs> so I was like a, a, I was like a kid at a candy store. I was the happiest <laughs> kid ever when I got in. Maybe that was because you, uh, you were accepted to scholarship. Uh, oh, yeah. But, yeah, I got self-financed. Mm -hmm. um, well... I, I liked the university, like overall that was, that was pretty good, mm -hmm. but uh, as I told you, if I had a chance mm -hmm. of repeating the same mm -hmm. like years, uh, I wouldn't apply to the same university. Mm -hmm. I would actually go abroad because mm -hmm. uh, I had been planning to go to Korea uh, or some like English speaking countries, mm -hmm. but for some reasons, uh, and my parents also didn't allow me to go because I was mm -hmm. like uh, 17 or 18 years old. Mm -hmm. My parents also didn't allow me to go uh, to a foreign country, so I had to uh, stay in Uzbekistan, and that was the only university that I applied for. Uh, I didn't apply to any other university. Well, that was that was pretty good, uh, but I cannot say I I learned much from this university. That was first of all uh, my fault. Well, I cannot say I studied. Uh, I, I was I cannot say I was a bad student because uh, I had second upper honor. Uh, that was pretty mm -hmm. good. Like, so not exactly a straight A student, but uh, it's the like the beginning beginner level of straight A student. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We had like four, I think, mm -hmm. uh, levels, right? Yeah, first the, class owner, second yeah. upper, second lower, and and something else there. Yeah, and I was like second upper, second upper, but uh, yeah, I, I studied the subjects well. Um, I never failed any exam. Uh, I had uh, I had never had this like referral deferral thing. Mm -hmm. um, I passed all the exams mm -hmm. from the first attempt, but I cannot say I learned much from from my university studies. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because of my major, because uh, business studies is is something very broad. Mm -hmm. It's something practical. Uh, there is not much theory. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that that's the main reason. Maybe that's uh, that's my own fault, or maybe that's because of COVID nineteen. We had uh, almost two years of online studies, mm -hmm. and I didn't join most of the classes. I would just prepare for the exam uh, sometime in advance, and that sufficed me. Um, generally, uh, that was just okay, not perfect experience, not very good, and not bad. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, how about social life back then? <clears throat> Yeah. So would you say you made a lot of friends? There? Yeah, I made a lot of friends. I made oh. a lot of friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, like in terms of the social life, that was a very good experience because uh, in Bukhara, like I couldn't meet this many mm -hmm. and this different types of people. Mm -hmm. um, I spent some time with the rich, with the poor, mm -hmm. um, with the people speaking another language, mm -hmm. with a mainly Russian speaker, mm -hmm. uh, like the circle of friends mm -hmm. uh and yeah I, I made a lot of friends like still now uh we have like good contact with each other mm -hmm. and yeah in this term yeah, that was a good experience yeah like uh, from this per perspective yeah i guess you can say university does have something to offer yeah let's I call it not not university but mm -hmm. uh life in tashkent like first mm -hmm. first years in tashkent because um, I was working at the same time, mm -hmm. and um, like in this, like the first six months or a year, I made a lot of new friends, a lot of new friends. And I, but and did you make most of those friends outside the university campus or? 
Well, I can say um, they were almost the same. There was the same circle because Mm -hmm. uh, most of the people that I worked with studied at the same university with Mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, in other courses, uh, in other years, Mm -hmm. but still they were also studying at the university. And that was a very good experience because uh, we could, we, we had something in common. Uh, mm-hmm. We shared the same like, interests, same mm-hmm. curriculum, right? Uh, I asked a lot of things mm-hmm. about the university life, about work. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like, th- that was a good experience. Uh, because uh, that's kind of my take on university life. I think on top of the academics, university uh, facilitates this environment for people, like-minded people to come together yeah. and meet each other share ideas, work together on different projects yeah. and yeah, you know, set goals absolutely. and ambitions, work toward, towards the goal. And, and, you know, there are some popular examples of actually CEOs who became friends with their dorm mate or university mate and they ended yeah. up, they went on to uh, launch their own company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? And, and the role of university in facilitating this interaction, I think, is very pivotal. Yeah. Um, for example, when I launched NISA, mm-hmm. like the ladies' school, mm-hmm. um, the project manager uh, was my old friend uh, who studied at the same university, but uh, she was like uh, a senior student then, mm-hmm. or I don't remember. Like uh, she was, she was older than us, and she helped out a lot, like with with this project with mm-hmm. NISA. Uh, she like. Uh, took all of this like responsibility for for marketing for mm-hmm. administration and uh hr manager also was my old friend from the university uh, they helped me a lot yeah mm-hmm. i see uh, speaking of work now i, I want to ask you some questions about your occupation at the, at the moment and it's what would you say is your occupation uh, <laughs> honestly you, i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so because people like us we wear different hats Sometimes yeah. we're a teacher, sometimes we're an entrepreneur, sometimes we're, we're a public speaker. Yeah. So we have all different titles. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So what I have in mind is we should probably talk about all these different titles, positions we have. So what do you say we start off with teaching? So how do you feel about teaching? What do you think are some pros and cons of teaching, working as a teacher? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I think... That's like I wouldn't call uh, being a teacher a job. For example, mm-hmm. uh, whenever someone asks my occupation, uh, I rarely say that I'm a teacher. Well, I can just uh, tell this to people uh, who are already familiar with this with this sphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say I'm, I'm a teacher, but for most people uh, who are not uh, very closely familiar with this um, with this like cram school thing, mm-hmm. learning centers. Mm-hmm. Uh, English, IELTS. I just say I'm I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah, or have some stereotypes about teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they I just, associate teachers with low pay, yeah, and boring job. Yeah, full time job. For uh-huh. example, um, well, currently um, I'm not working uh, nine to nine mm-hmm. in this nine, nine to nine schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, well, currently I have like uh, one shift of one and a half hour in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then uh, two or sometimes three shifts in mm-hmm. the evening, mm-hmm. and that's it. I cannot say I'm I'm teaching full time. Mm-hmm. Um, like I have this like responsible administrative mm-hmm. respons- responsibilities, mm-hmm. managerial responsibilities, mm-hmm. but uh, I would say this teaching is a part of our life mm-hmm. that we can never get out of. Um, well, I think that's just a part of life. Uh, for example, I have some teachers. I have like around five teachers that are working for for our school. And uh, I can anytime like step back or go again into teaching. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't say um, that's something that uh, we get immersed into. You mean like it's like a temporary gig? It's well, not- I wouldn't say temporary. That's because mm-hmm. uh, if you can just switch on and off. And well, for example, when it comes to me, uh, I don't know about you and Alicia, but when mm-hmm. it comes to me, uh, I'm. I'm in the school. I'm in the school. Uh, I I know, let's say, the administrative work better than anyone in the school, and the same with the financial and legal things. 
the other project that I'm launching now, uh, the same with it. Like uh, all the financial, legal, and administrative things is on me. Mm-hmm. I have like three people in this project now mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. But um, I can say like uh, I'm I'm serving mainly as a leader, uh, trying to do all like all the responsibilities by myself and like sharing a very small portion of it mm-hmm. to like other team members, and uh, gradually. Uh, I want to decrease the, the amount of responsibility that I'm that I'm undertaking. It's like um, I'm spending the whole day at the school, and I can always step back or step step into teaching uh, mm-hmm. according to the demand. Mm-hmm. Or uh, so you mean like if there are students wanting to take your class, then you're back to teaching. Yeah. But if there aren't that many students, then you take a break from teaching yes, and yes, the same. Yeah. spend more time on your side projects. Yeah, yeah. Clear. So what's your personal approach to teaching? How do you go about teaching? Well, you mean, mm-hmm. uh, what do you mean by approach? Uh, so say you're in the classroom uh-huh. and you got five students and you're supposed to teach them a class. Uh-huh. So how do you go about it? Do you use a textbook or do you just come and sit and tell stories, which is uh-huh. what I practically do? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, my students uh, uh-huh. can can prove this, that mm-hmm. I'm a very strict person when it comes mm-hmm. to teaching. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so strict. I'm so strict. Mm-hmm. Like, firstly, I, I start all my classes uh, with something about discipline. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I'm so strict when it comes to the homework, for example. How about showing up on time? Are you strict about punctuality? Uh, yeah, that's um, that's something that's a bit problematic these days. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. cannot say I'm a very punctual person. Yeah. Um, same here, same story. I ask you that because <laughs> if you're strict with punctuality, then I wouldn't last a day at your school. <laughs> I'd probably <laughs> yeah. be kicked out. Yeah. I cannot say I'm, I'm a very punctual person, uh-huh. especially in the mornings. Uh-huh. Because now, like uh, in Ramadan, well, mm-hmm. uh, I'm running. I'm running late, like most mm-hmm. of the time, mm-hmm. uh, in the morning classes. But in evening classes, I'm mm-hmm. always, almost always mm-hmm. on time. Well, uh, but I'm so strict when it comes to like changing mindset mm-hmm. uh, of students when they start mm-hmm. these intensive classes. Mm-hmm. Well, in Bukhara, that's that's pretty good. Uh, like I think the discipline problem, uh, getting immersed in this uh, in this like new new atmosphere we kind of have the same problem here trust me but i think uh, that's worse in tashkent uh, yeah yeah that's worse oh, in tashkent. why do you think that's the case why do you think most students in the class they don't have a learner mindset they they're not committed they are not willing to learn as much as students in other regions well there are so many uh, factors there are so many factors well uh, we may be criticized for discussing this topic now mm-hmm. uh, because I have discussed this topic with uh, like in the podcast of IDP mm-hmm. uh, I, I do podcast mm-hmm. they asked me a question about uh, teaching in Bukhara and teaching in Tashkent mm-hmm. um, I mainly said like uh, the um, like shortly speaking, I was saying uh, in Bukhara people are uh, like more disciplined than in Tashkent, mm-hmm. and in Tashkent we have like uh, more facilities, mm-hmm. entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I checked out the comments, and there was mainly mm-hmm. uh, like all negative comments. Um, but honestly, you guys can't really debate that. Like it's when there are too many distractions around, you're always tempted to go out and have fun. And when there are no distractions, well, your only distraction is a book. Your only distraction is, uh, is class, right? It just, it makes sense. Like whether you hate this uh, perspective or you like it, it, it is what it is. You just have to take it. Yeah, but after yeah. the podcast, uh, I, I tried to explore this in depth mm-hmm. and um, there are so many factors. Mm-hmm. That starts from school. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, schools in, in Bukhara are stricter. Yeah, we should admit that. Mm-hmm. Because in Tashkent, uh, most of my, like now, most of my students say they don't go to the school. Like, I'm like, how come? Mm-hmm. Is that even possible? Mm-hmm. Because I don't remember any day that I, that I missed school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, there are like five or seven days, like all of, the, of this 
uh, nine years of, mm-hmm. of school. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember any day me or some of my classmates, groupmates at school missed miss or um, mm-hmm. like played truant. Mm-hmm. But in Tashkent, that's, that's so often, mm-hmm. that's so often. That's why um, I think, uh, let's say like cumulative process mm-hmm. uh, that starts with school and then uh, people surrounding this learners uh, also uh, have something to play. And then uh, distraction, yeah, the amenities in Tashkent. Mm-hmm. Because in Bukhara, like even if you want uh to hang out Mm -hmm. there are some limited facilities right Mm -hmm. and you can try them all like in a week (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) but in tashkent there is never ending dynamic yeah that's why uh, i think Mm -hmm. there are so many factors that contribute to this to this negative trend i see so your main philosophy with regard to teaching is setting the right tone yeah at the beginning of the class yeah. by lecturing students on the importance of staying disciplined yeah. and saying no to distractions. Yes. And once you get this out of the way, how do you proceed? What do you do next? Well, uh, I, like m- now, like mm-hmm. currently I'm teaching, like mostly I'm teaching students uh, that have already taken IELTS and uh, they already come to my, like join my classes with, with IELTS 5 or 5.5. And, um, Unfortunately, sadly, I'm spending uh, like more than I think two months mm-hmm. to fix mm-hmm. what they have learned incorrectly mm-hmm. in terms of everything, everything. You mean like grammar, vocabulary? Uh, not, not, not grammar. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, reading and listening. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, they never try to understand the gist. Mm-hmm. They never try to understand what's going on in, in listening and reading. They, they were taught mainly how to work with the keywords, mm-hmm. how to catch the answer even if they don't understand the context. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why like, I fix mindsets now. Mm-hmm. Like I spent uh, two months lecturing uh, about the reliable sources. Mm-hmm. I teach them band descriptors in details, both in mm-hmm. writing and speaking. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we work on reading and listening uh, by working on comprehension mainly. Like, uh, we don't do IELTS listening uh, at all, almost. Because uh, mainly I work with TOEFL listening just for the sake of uh, boosting their comprehension. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fix what they have already learned incorrectly. Well, uh, yeah, first I lecture and then we practice together. Well, Mm -hmm. my classes start with the homework. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, we... Uh, we check the mm-hmm. problems, mm-hmm. Uh, like that's mainly uh, the diagnosis. I see what's the problem uh, with the students uh, after working on homework for about like 30 minutes and then we move to the lecture part. In lecture part, as I told you, well, I start with the myths and the truth. Yeah, I, I open the Pauline column books, mm-hmm. I use the band descriptors, I explain them in details, I show what's wrong and what's right, and then we practice together. That's the way how it works these days. Do you enjoy this process? Uh, yeah. Do you enjoy yeah, the process yeah, of yeah, teaching? Yeah. Yes, yes. Does I love it, it. Does it ever get boring? No, no, no. Never, never. I love it. I love teaching. Be- because I can't keep a straight face and say I love teaching because that would be so untrue. Because no. there are times when I walk into the classroom and I'm ha- I have to repeat myself again and again and again and just get sick and tired of it sometimes but what i do in those moments i tell myself well that's what i signed up for this is my job whether i love it or hate it i'm gonna have to do it anyway so have you ever asked yourself uh why do you have this like feelings about teaching why do i have i think it's not really my attitude towards teaching i think it's just the human nature when you do something on repeat I okay. eventually get really good at it. Uh-huh. You don't feel like doing it anymore. One uh, really good you example. Want big chal- like new challenges, right? Yeah. The one great example would be riding a bike. Uh-huh. When you're young, you, before you get your first bike, you're so excited about it. You're always uh, pestering your parents, wanting to get a bike. Dad, get me a bike. Dad, get me a bike. And they finally get you one, and you learn how to ride a bike. And two weeks in, 
the bike is somewhere in the corner piling dust. Mm, yeah. Because it's not interesting anymore. Because you 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 get really good at riding a bike, mm-hmm. and it, it, you don't find it challenging. So you're gonna want to try something different. So that's when you develop passion for wanting to drive a car. <laughs> but I personally so, think that's mainly because uh, you're teaching full time. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Though. Yeah, because uh, I wanted to stop teaching mm-hmm. uh, several times. First, mm-hmm. uh, after COVID nineteen, uh, when mm-hmm. I came back to Bukhara and mm-hmm. when I launched this like Al Bukhari project, mm-hmm. that was a that was a big project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, that was that was so demanding, mm-hmm. like both like mentally and physically. Uh, I ran a team of uh, more than thirty people. Wow, that's a big school. That's yeah. almost the size of this school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Well, yeah, that was that was so demanding. Mm-hmm. And then I stopped teaching for about like eight months, mm-hmm. eight months, and I couldn't stop myself. I wanted to launch a group. Mm-hmm. At least I wanted to start online classes mm-hmm. because I couldn't. I just couldn't live without teaching. Okay. And then uh, I went to Tashkent. I started teaching, and I started uh, Nisa project at the same time. And then again, I wanted to stop teaching. Uh, I was thinking it would be better uh, to to work on my team, to work on other teachers, uh, and uh, not not to like go again in teaching this deep. Mm-hmm. Because uh, so many people told me that I wouldn't be able to control like all these uh, mm-hmm. departments of the company well mm-hmm. if I'm in teaching. Mm-hmm. because that's time consuming right but that wasn't the case that wasn't the case like i again uh, wanted to get back into teaching mm-hmm. and now uh, the difference between you and me is is the time that we spend teaching i think yeah i think well as i told you i have one shift in the morning mm-hmm. and two sometimes three in the evening and i cannot say i'm um, I'm depressed or I'm stressed because of teaching. No, never. Never. I, yeah. I love it. I love it. I, I need I need some of this mentality, right? <laughs> I'm really glad we're having this uh, episode today so I can uh, absorb this energy and go back to my classes feeling more enthusiastic and passionate about teaching. <laughs> well, I think uh, you just need to get rid of some groups. Oh, some, yeah. of, some of your groups. Yeah. Well, um, well, my my routine is like uh, mm-hmm. I start classes at ten thirty now, mm-hmm. um, and uh, from ten thirty to twelve thirty, mm-hmm. and then I go out. I go to the mosque, mm-hmm. and then I go go home, mm-hmm. spend some time there. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes go and do some like uh, mm-hmm. other things, mm-hmm. other affairs, uh, and then I can come like come back mm-hmm. at three thirty p.m. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I teach to 6.30, mm-hmm. sometimes to 8. Mm-hmm. And I cannot say uh, that usually that's, that's a stressful or mm-hmm. exhausting day. Yeah. So you something. like to uh, switch things up a bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which is something I should be doing more often, yeah. I guess, in my life. Yeah, you should go out. You should yeah. go out of the school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I actually have been lately going out and talking to different people because to set up podcasts like this, I have to go and talk to guests. So we usually have meetups before yeah. the we shoot the podcast. So we go out to different places, talk and help? chat. Uh, so much, so much. I'm, yeah, starting to, I'm starting to realize there's more to life than teaching. Yeah, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but and the, I think you should take up mm-hmm. uh, another hobby. Yeah, but but I, I already have a bunch of hobbies like this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it, it gets yeah. me so fired up every time I'm having a podcast. It's a it's the best day ever. Uh-huh. But but at the same time, I do think I should keep teaching because I feel like it's the only thing that keeps me disciplined. Uh-huh. Because no matter how many times I teach one concept, every time I feel like I'm learning it myself all over in a new light with that student. That's how I feel about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and appreciative of that process. And I understand why it's important to do that. It's like brushing your teeth. It can be boring, but you have, it, it is boring. You have to do, but you have to do it every morning yeah. to have healthy teeth, right? And I feel the same way about teaching. It's something 
I may not necessarily enjoy as much as I used to do when I started out, but I do need it to stay disciplined. I need it to put in the hours and constantly refine my skills and my and my abilities. Yeah. 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 Well, I can't really imagine my life without teaching either. I should probably start stop being so all grumpy about it. Yeah. 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 For example, uh, when it comes to me as well, I cannot I cannot just imagine working from mm -hmm. nine to nine now, like uh, mm -hmm. or working full time somewhere else, teaching mm -hmm. like uh, throughout the whole day. I mm -hmm. cannot just imagine that. But um, what what seems ideal to me, even in the future, is. I'll be running my own school mm -hmm. and I'll be taking groups whenever I feel like. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll be feeling like it like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not not many groups, but like two, three groups. That that's that's what I see as an ideal mm -hmm. uh, like future. I'll be running mm -hmm. my own school, I'll be running my other projects, but mm -hmm. teaching should be a part of my my day, like every day. Every day. I see. So and how does managing compared to teaching which one of these two would you say is more difficult i think managing mm -hmm. i think managing yeah because so why is that working with different types of people mm -hmm. well whenever you're teaching you'll be controlling the whole group you'll mm -hmm. be controlling uh, the situation that's, that's mm -hmm. totally in your hands but mm -hmm. when it comes to management mm -hmm. no that's not in your hands well, sometimes um, you're so dependent on other people mm -hmm. that they screw up the process mm -hmm. and you can, you can do nothing to help. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, you have these unforeseen circumstances just because of other people, just because of other people maybe in your team mm -hmm. or some external people. And uh, I think that's, that's something difficult about uh, managerial positions, mm -hmm. like all of them working with different types of people mm -hmm. uh, that are not in the same line as you. Uh, but in the class, uh, like you're the head figure, right? You can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can control the situation and you see how, how it's going, right? Like at the end of the day, you, you, should, you can have some reflection and think what's going right and wrong. But when it comes to managing, not always. That's not always in your hands. There are a lot of external factors and I think that makes it difficult. So how do you go about then managing people? What are some, say, the personal codes, maybe guidelines or qualities, skills you think people wanting to get into a manager managerial position should have? Tolerance, mm -hmm. so, flexibility, uh -huh. uh, and discipline. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But um, still, I cannot say I'm, mm. a, I'm a good, I'm a perfect manager because I have a lot mm. of things to learn uh, about management. But uh, from all this knowledge uh, that I had theoretically at the university and that I had during this, like uh, my personal experience, mm -hmm. uh, the practice, well, I can say uh, you should be flexible because you'll be working with different types of people and you cannot require that they should adapt to you. No, I think that's, that's the wrong approach mm -hmm. to ask people to adapt to your requirements because they can never meet your requirements. Like the whole team can never meet your requirements. You mean like standards? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can yeah. ask them to have the same standards as you. Yeah. That's just unrealistic. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you should be a bit tolerant. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be flexible. Uh, mm -hmm. you, should, you should have like IQ and EQ mm -hmm. uh, like in balance. And um, you should accept people as they are mm -hmm. and gradually in long term, mm -hmm. you can somehow change them to meet your standards and requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, in short term, you can, you can just never do it. It's, it's unrealistic. I tried a lot. Mm -hmm. When I came to Bukhara, I, I tried to use the standards uh, and requirements of, of Tashkent because I was working in some of the top learning centers, right? Uh, I worked in Result, that was the best of its time. Mm -hmm. And then I was working in Thompson School. Uh, that was pretty successful, right? In 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. and, it's uh, not successful anymore? Well, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's, it would be okay to say uh, that in uh, podcast. But <laughs> uh, well, please. I feel like they recently had, they set up their own headquarters. Yeah. Like it, they moved into a big fancy building. Right? Yeah, but do you think that's mm -hmm. the success of a business? Well, I mean, well, if they got into a new building, fancy-looking building, 
they're probably doing something, right? Uh, I don't think so, because in our sphere, in, mm -hmm. in education, uh, I think the people, the people who are working for your company will decide mm -hmm. how successful you are, not the mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. uh, not the marketing practices or campaigns, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, back then, in like mm -hmm. 2020, I had uh, good experience. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I and I wanted to use use it all in Bukhara. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no problem with the finance. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some people who were always investing in in the project in Bukhara, but the people, the people can never meet the standards that you want, that you think is realistic. Well, what are some examples of standards you're talking about? For so example, what? working with the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make it so formal, so professional mm -hmm. to work with each client that comes, that, that phones, that steps into the building. Mm -hmm. But uh, even I had some, like, I think two administrators, mm -hmm. Uh, that observed the whole process, how I talk to different people, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the parents mm -hmm. who brought their child. Mm -hmm. But it never worked. It never worked. It never. They, they observed mm -hmm. how, I, how I talk to people, but they could never, they could never uh, replicate it. Mm -hmm. I, I showed them uh, how like, different uh, successful administrators work with the clients. Mm -hmm. I asked them to call all companies that I think have mm -hmm. uh, good customer service. They found them all. Like mm -hmm. I asked them to write uh, the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. I asked them to uh, fill a form. Uh, I gave them a form mm -hmm. uh, and I asked them to call, I think, 20 companies a day and talk to the customer support uh, mm -hmm. as a customer mm -hmm. and write down all the pros, cons and some feedback. Mm -hmm. I did everything that I could, but still, like after three months or four months of working, um, I didn't see any progress. Like they would go back to the classic way of talking to clients mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in this Uzbek style and in Bukharian style. Yeah, I actually have a re theory why people working here in administrative jobs prefer to stay stick to their own manner of talking. It's, I feel like it simply creates a cozy environment, cozy atmosphere. Like, yeah, so if there is maybe. too much paperwork you're doing and you have to talk a certain way, it just creates that, that it puts too much pressure on both people. Yes, yes, the, but there the, are some things uh -huh. that, that can be mm -hmm. and they cannot be told to the, to the customer, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You cannot make it uh, totally casual. Mm -hmm. You cannot make it like you're talking to your friend, mm -hmm. right? They should be like uh, mm -hmm. the distinction between the way how you talk to a client mm -hmm. and the way how you talk to a person that you're seeing for the first time mm -hmm. and uh, in a way how you talk to the, to the old client, mm -hmm. to an already loyal client. Mm -hmm. But like that was a bit problematic so they use the same approach to all clients yeah and oh, yeah. Uh, they that were, can be a problem there were so many things mm -hmm. that i that i asked them not to reveal to the customers mm -hmm. well uh, our people are so curious right mm -hmm. like especially in bukhara they ask who started this project mm -hmm. who is the head of this project mm -hmm. how much they are investing in this project mm -hmm. how many students are there in the in in the school mm -hmm. or in mm -hmm. the um uh, like learning center. But don't you think parents are entitled to know these things? They just want to make sure their kids are in the right hands. Yeah, but there are some things that uh, they, they can be uh, mm -hmm. informed about. But I think... I agree. You're not supposed to share how many students there are in the building. Like This is confidential. This is sensitive. But when you're asked about the head of the project, who's in charge? Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. The, the well, kids' future <laughs> teachers and their past band scores, their teaching experience, or their past results. Yeah. Like as a parent, I'd be curious to know uh, if my kid, kids' future teachers, are credible. Yeah. So I'd. I'd they're some, don't you think they're simply doing their research? Yeah, that's okay to do research, but mm -hmm. it's not okay to ask. Uh, who owns this building, mm -hmm. right? Or um, are you renting this building mm -hmm. or did you construct it by yourself? Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> that, that's a little out of line. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, there were, were some clients mm -hmm. uh, that came 
and they were asking for some like personal information of the mm-hmm. uh, of the staff members. Mm-hmm. Well, that was that well, was somehow unethical, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, uh, and this like work ethics mm-hmm. uh, in the in the project mm-hmm. was the most challenging part that I had to fight against. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, we could make some strides, but uh, I wouldn't say that was totally the way how I wanted it to work. So you tried setting your own standards, but your staff couldn't live up to them. Yeah, you cannot uh, make, I, I think uh, that's the case with everyone, with every company. Mm-hmm. Uh, you set the standards. Yeah, that's okay to set standards, to set requirements, because uh, you should have mission, you should have uh, your own way of working, right? But it's unrealistic to ask everybody to adapt to it, like to meet the standards. Yeah. Yeah, management can be a real pain in the neck. Yeah. If I can speak from personal experience and say we first year when we moved in, we had so many management problems and honestly we didn't have any idea what we were doing. We practically figured everything out along the way. And but but the good part is we did not encounter the same problems as you did because I kind of feel like we got lucky with our staff members a majority of whom happen to be our former students and we share the same yeah, mentality yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The that made is, that made the process so so much straightforward and 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 stress free because I know how hard it is to bring people from outside and train yeah, them yeah. and get them to follow your way of doing things operating yeah. that take that can take ages and and what we do is simply have people take our program and and hire them only after they graduate the program so by the time they finish the program I'm talking about our IELTS program is they get a good clue how uh, the things how things work here and what we expect from our students or staff so yeah. that that saves us this whole process of hiring and r- training people. Yeah, yeah. The program itself ser- serves as a training ground. Yeah, and another for thing. Our future uh, yeah, and another thing uh, mm-hmm. that you were lucky about was uh, you and Alisher come from almost the same background, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way how you prepared for IELTS, the mm-hmm. way uh, how, how you spent these four years in Tashkent. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you work for the same company, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you studied the same thing at the university, almost, mm-hmm. almost the same thing. Um, and uh, you were teaching the same program. Like, uh, that was so lucky of you. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, as you told, uh, like, all the staff members are your previous students. And uh, they already got, like, acquired some experience of yours mm-hmm. before they started work here, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was pretty lucky of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess Lady Luck likes us. Now, uh, another thing I would like to ask you on today's episode is social media. I know you're big on social media. I I was. I was. You still are. I mean, you're you're involved in a lot of big online projects. I know you got your own channel on YouTube, and I'm familiar with some of your posts on Instagram, and I know that you got a channel on Telegram. So. Uh, can you sh- let us in on some secrets about social media, how to become successful on social media? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, uh, becoming successful in social media now uh, doesn't mean the same thing as it meant several years ago. Mm-hmm. Because when I started uh, my own blog, uh, there were a handful of people mm-hmm. who were running blog, especially in, in like... Uh, mm-hmm. in education, in, in English, in IELTS. Mm-hmm. But now... Um, Everyone has got one. <laughs> yes, and I'm, I'm stepping back. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm stepping back. Like I'm not posting as often as in the past, mm-hmm. and I'm strictly filtering all the information that I share with my audience. Mm-hmm. And, um, and where do you share that information? On Telegram or YouTube? Uh, on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, Telegram... Well, I have some podcasts um, mm-hmm. that are not ready, but I have some podcasts for YouTube, 
and uh, the quality, uh, the content also has like shifted. Mm -hmm. I cannot say that's totally uh, like uh, that has totally changed, but I can say we just diverted the direction uh, a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, like personally, I want to step back from internet. I just want to stop posting. I just mm -hmm. want to run uh, the school's profile, mm -hmm. and I don't want to run a blog anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know that's my that's my responsibility. I have this responsibility um, before the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, I should I should proceed this process, but. Uh, I don't feel like doing so because first of all, the notion of being successful, the notion of being popular has, has changed totally, has changed dramatically because, um, when I started my blog, uh, well, I, I told this, uh, in another podcast, I said, I'm not an, uh, what was that? I'm an educator, not an entertainer, mm -hmm. right? And um, now you should be a showman. You should be uh, even sharing some trash. Um, you should be sharing something entertaining, mm -hmm. not informative, not not uh, not in education. Even if you are running an uh, running a blog in in mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. um, you should be living a life that you don't normally do mm -hmm. to become successful and to become popular. So like. Pretend to be someone. Yeah, you should like pretend an to be someone, and um, you should be going beyond your uh, values. You should be go. You should be going beyond your standards, mm -hmm. uh, your values, uh, who you are, your identity. I think the term they use is "sell your soul." Yes, you have to sell yes. your soul to get more views. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so some people do that. Definitely. Okay. I don't really know. <laughs> Where you got that idea, I'm sure you got your own reasons, but there are a lot of podcasters and content creators who are super successful. In Uzbekistan? In, in not just Uzbekistan, in every country with their own content, their own style and their own format. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I think there is audience for all kinds of content. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, well, um, what, what, what I, what I, well, sorry for cutting you short. I feel like, and I might be wrong here, but, well, the philosophy, my philosophy here with content creation is I don't want to make something my audience wants to see. I want to make something I want to see. And if they like it, so be it. If they don't like it, so be it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my take on it. Right. I'm not really interested in how other people react to it. I'm not interested in what other people are doing. I'm just doing it because I liked it. I like it. I, I'm just doing it because I see myself doing it. And, and I'm not, I'm, I could not care less yeah. what trends are popular right now. I could not care less if I have to pretend to be someone else to be popular because I'm not going to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. same, the same so with I'm, me, yeah. What I'm trying to say here is really, you just have to be authentic. So be, be the tr true self and put it on camera and, and then social media. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't like it, then sorry, that's me. But don't you think we have some social yeah. responsibility mm -hmm. of um, educating the public, mm -hmm. educating the youth mm -hmm. and changing their mindset to some extent. Well, uh, what do you mean? I, I don't think we have any obligation here. You, don't you think we have social obligation over, over the youth? Because over? We, uh, we, we call ourselves educators, right? I or never we, called myself that. People do. I never did. And it's their problem. Uh, it, plus, if there's something wrong with my content, and if they think it doesn't sit well with their values, it doesn't sit well with their mindset, please tune out. Go watch something else. <laughs> All right. Who is your target audience? Um, my target audience is the world. Uh -huh. The uh, world. Don't I, you I'm have not, any... I'm, I'm not targeting anyone because I know uh, anyone in any, from any corner of the world right now can tune in and watch this podcast regardless of what b back background mm -hmm. right. they're, they're from. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, see. I see. So, 
Well, um, when it comes to my own experience of uh, so what running I'm, a what blog. I'm, what I'm trying to say, let me finish this off here. Uh, I'm trying to keep an open mind about this podcast. It's like two guys yes, sitting and talking. Yes, and, and I know our m- main audience, viewers, are Uzbek students and some students who are in, involved in IELTS. And yes, I have the responsibility, obligation to uh, put out their accurate information, right? And I've, I have the responsibility to uh, to watch my manners because I know a lot of students out there look up to me. They look up to us. Yeah, the this same is, here. This is well. This is don't our, you think our responsibility? But at the same time, you have to understand that every video on the internet comes with a disclaimer. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a disclaimer. Yeah. It means please check with your health official and do not take this advice. And we should probably start setting, putting up a disclaimer on this podcast too. Please do not uh, believe any advice on this podcast or take every <laughs> advice on this podcast with a grain of salt. And which is, which is what you should be doing when you watch any podcast, not, not just this podcast. It's just common sense. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the way I see it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, uh, I have two questions. Uh-huh. Okay. Let me first of all remind it to myself. Uh, sure. Um, the w- one was about Instagram. Do Do you use Instagram personally? Nope. Never. Uh, ah, all right. Well, okay. Okay. Good. Good. I'm going to uh, mm-hmm. like go deeper in it now, like yeah. in seven moments. Well, uh, and the second question was mm-hmm. um, that was about mm-hmm. that was about the the show. Yeah. Do you mm-hmm. think your show is successful? I don't think so. All right. It's, you, well, and I do, I'm not really interested whether it's ever going to be successful uh-huh. because I'm just doing it for fun. All right. All right. All right. Let, let's uh, mm-hmm. let's keep it aside now mm-hmm. for a while. Um, do you think uh, you're running your blogs successfully, mm-hmm. be it on Telegram or mm-hmm. YouTube? Well, that depends on how you define success. If if you use the number if the if you use the size of the audience as a metric, uh-huh. uh, well then what would be big size for an, for an education, for an educational channel? I think 10k plus is a pretty big audience. So yeah. we're four times yeah, 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 that yeah, size. Yeah, so yeah. you could say we are relatively successful, but uh-huh. I don't. That's not what I think though. That's what most people think. Because yeah. I want, because I want a million <laughs> followers. I want a million subscribers. <laughs> Why? So we're nowhere, nowhere near that. Just to be successful on, on N- media? No, because million sounds cool. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> million sounds better than uh, hundred thousand, and ten million sounds better than one mil. Yeah. Hundred mil sounds better than ten mil. So, it's it, it, to, to me the way I see it is all about growing. Oh. All right, so I see, I see, if, I see. if I have more audience and better content today than I did two weeks ago, that's to me success. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, at this stage of my life on media mm-hmm. uh, now, uh, I want degrowth mm-hmm. because, well, when I started my blogs, mm-hmm. I had this like initial intention of uh, sharing something useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like uh, I also was like anybody, not, not me. Uh, wants to be successful in everything you start, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in every project you launch. And uh, the same was with me. I wanted to run a successful blog uh, on YouTube, on Instagram, on mm-hmm. Telegram. Mm-hmm. And I invested a lot of money, uh, like for all these podcasts mm-hmm. uh, and for all this like Instagram thing. I can say I never earned money from, from my blogs mm-hmm. directly. And maybe indirectly I earned some uh, some sum of money, but... Um, like directly, I never earned uh, any amount of money from my YouTube, uh, from my Instagram or Telegram. The thing was, I just wanted to uh, share something useful and uh, wanted to influence the youth somehow, somehow. Um, And then the thing is, today on Instagram, Instagram is is so spoiled, that's so spoiled these days, that uh, your blog isn't considered to be successful or cannot uh, attract much information, and like, I'm sorry, uh, cannot attract much attraction, like the attention, uh, if you'll be sharing something totally useful 
informative. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Uzbekistan. I'm talking about Uzbekistan exclusively. And but uh, where did you get that idea? Uh, because I've been in it for some years already. Because I know there are a lot of useful channels on Instagram and they're super successful. In Uzbekistan? Yes. For example? Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head right now, but I bet we can right now go online and look up some educational co- uh, channels on Instagram. And I'm sure you're going to see a few with million followers or at least 500,000 followers. Well, I don't think so. so I don't think so. It, well, even even some personal blogs mm-hmm. that are being run by people uh, for working like mm-hmm. in the same sphere with us, uh, they they are successful, not because they are sharing something mm-hmm. useful, just because they are sharing something interesting, mm-hmm. that they are sharing something irrelevant, mm-hmm. that they are sharing something funny, mm-hmm. or sharing like uh, like serving not as an educator but as a showman. Mm-hmm. That's the thing on Instagram these days. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's high time we also started m- making more content, useful content, with interesting package. Maybe so we can we maybe, can we can we can do something about the situation because yeah, and podcasting I know is not the most interesting thing to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But well, but if you just keep putting in the work and content, eventually I feel like we're gonna be able to come out of this mess. Well, um, and get and get more attention. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. That's realistic. That's totally mm-hmm. realistic. But uh, that takes so much time, and that will be so difficult. Well, I feel that that will really be so difficult. When I started my blog, I was sharing the same content, mm-hmm. the same type of content, um, both on YouTube, Instagram, and Telegram. Uh, but I was so successful, I was so popular, uh, like uh, I can say among the youth, among the colleagues, uh, I was so popular, yeah, mm-hmm. when I started my blogs. But then, uh, I kept posting something that I liked, as you said, I liked, I thought that was useful uh, for the public. And I like, always felt that I had this social responsibility. I'm running blogs and I'm, uh, and I'm like, trying to deliver a message to the public, especially to the youth, my target audience. Mm-hmm. And I have some responsibilities. I, al- I always felt that. But then uh, my blog, like I felt this, I felt this. My, I had very loyal uh, like followers and I have so educated people, very educated people, both on YouTube and Instagram. But I'm not called successful media person anymore. Why? Because of this uh, red ocean uh, that's, that's so saturated and that's so spoiled, uh, the Instagram world. Mm-hmm. And that's why like, I'm, I'm posting, I'm still shooting some videos uh, that I think are useful, but they are not called successful anymore. Mm-hmm. But that's the same thing. Maybe you may accuse me of uh, not following the trends. No, it's not about the trends. Maybe you, you can accuse me of not sharing something, something useful or uh, irrelevant mm-hmm. well, I don't think so because um, I asked some people in this sphere to compare the um, the blogs and they say uh, to be successful to be famous to be called successful blogger not an educator a blogger you should be a showman you should sell your soul mm-hmm. that's the thing that's the thing that's why like I'm stepping back I'm thinking of um, starting another blog that will be mainly about the books, about uh, what I'm personally interested in, something about, let's say, uh, politics, uh, something about Netflix documentaries, documentaries. Uh, mainly, yeah, again, about politics. Um, and I'm going to share something very difficult to understand uh, and what I think is useful and informative. 
but I will never share those things that I considered to be uh, to be a reflection of mm-hmm. success on media now. Yeah, success. Well, all I can say is I'm super excited to see what you got in store. I'm sure our audience is too, guys. Well, yeah, it's a bit of controversial topic, social media, I admit. Yeah. So, and do you follow the Orbix channel on Telegram? Uh, no, not exactly. Well, he also posted a lot about about the same matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, he called some like influencers mm-hmm. a censored word, influencers, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. because of the same thing, like because of sharing trash. Uh, mm-hmm. what's what's sad about this trend is uh, they call themselves the best they mm-hmm. call themselves uh, better than those teachers that have been mm-hmm. that have been teaching for uh, like 15 20 years mm-hmm. uh, who have uh, like more in their portfolio than them uh, uh, can I ask you something yeah Oh, why do you just why do you care about those people? Why don't you just mind your own business? <laughs> well, well, that's you can you can do you, that. The world is so much better when you just mind your own business. Yeah, Cause, like because I don't honestly know who you're talking about and what you're talking <laughs> about, and and I'm in so much bliss. Uh, but uh, I, if you want to be if you want to be successful, if you want to be popular, mm-hmm. and if you want mm-hmm. to gain this one million followers, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have to. You don't have to follow those people. Well, you don't have you, to you, keep, you keep up with the latest I think, trends. I think you should. You should. Here's my take on this. So what happens when you are exposed to all that content is that you end up involuntarily replicating it and look like a copycat. So I don't if, think so. If you, if you think uh-huh. if you think that's that's a good piece of like content. Mm-hmm. But if you think uh, sure if you don't like someone's content then just stop watching it but don't there is no really point because what happens when you start talking about it is you come across as the bad guy because you are simply validating their work you're simply giving them more credibility because you're talking about them <laughs> if you want them to go away you're not supposed just to ta- stop talking about them right? exactly but uh, but there is a thing called market uh-huh. well to gain one million followers mm-hmm. you should understand the market well like that's mm-hmm. how any business works, right? That's mm-hmm. that's how any project works. Mm-hmm. You should understand what what the audience wants, mm-hmm. what works with the audience, and what is appreciated by by Uzbek audience. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're like I, I, I love your podcasts. Mm-hmm. I, I watch them. I watch mm-hmm. them. I love your podcasts, and I think um, that's that's high level, especially like in Uzbekistan, that's considered, like I, I personally think that's one of the best podcasts in Uzbekistan. Oh, thank you. But, but the still. <laughs> Guys, you see, now we have so many eyeballs, people watching us, and we have to keep the standards high. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> because this is what I'm always telling yeah. them. For us to bring more guests and keep our view count high, we have to have everything figured on the technical side. And I'm going to do my best here, guys. So... You understand? So the podcast is big now. Yeah, by the way, I... I <laughs> but you guys are not getting a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, mo- that's no, the most no important part. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah, uh, by the way, I, I ask my students mm-hmm. uh, like all the time to watch your podcast uh, and to watch uh, like what you have to say to these guys. But uh, to gain one million followers, Muhammad Ali, like, mm-hmm. even if you want it or not, mm-hmm. you should understand how how YouTube, how Instagram is working, uh, what audience wants, uh, what is appreciated and mm-hmm. what's, what's just ignored. Uh, and there's a thing called market. That's it. Like mm-hmm. you need to understand the market. Understand how the market works. Got yeah. It. And um, when you like dive deeper in how Instagram and YouTube is working in Uzbekistan these days, mm-hmm. I think you're also is going to be like mo- even more frustrated than me. Mm-hmm. I mean, social media is always complicated. So I try to keep it simple. If I'm not interested in the content, I don't watch it. If it's interesting, I try to learn from it. So 
I, I try not to get hung up on all the noise. You're talking about the noise. Yes. And, and you are this 1% of all internet users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true though. It's so hard to, to say no to content. It's so hard to, you just can't help but comment. You just can't help but react. <laughs> you just can't help. It's just human nature. We're social creatures. We're yeah. accustomed to interacting. We're accustomed to exchanging views. Yeah. yeah. And there are like uh, millions of uh, people from Uzbekistan who are, who are using Instagram. Mm -hmm. And uh, those people who, who act like you, uh, who watch the content that they like, and they, the ones that can filter the information, the, the mm -hmm. ones that can sort out uh, for themselves what's mm -hmm. good and what's bad, is just 1%. Mm -hmm. The other 99% mm -hmm. decides who is successful and who is popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's the market. Sure. And we also got to keep in mind that most people go on social media not so much looking for education, Thank you. but Thank looking you. for yeah, an escape yeah. from education. Yeah, yeah, so when yeah. you when you try feeding them more of education, of course they're going to hate you. Because when I'm personally on YouTube or Instagram, I'm not really watching our own channel. <laughs> Really, because when I'm on YouTube, I'm usually watching other people's channel because I want an escape from work, because I want an escape from uh, our podcast, uh, truth be told, guys. And I'm sure <laughs> you're on your phone right now, Mr. The, the guy behind the camera, our <laughs> editor. He's not exactly watching our channel. He's watching a bunch of other people's channel, cooking videos, people doing silly things. Yeah. yeah. So it's completely normal. What I'm trying to say, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I'm not angry at people. Uh, it's a it's a, just a normal behavior so i'm I'm guilty of it too we are all guilty of it too when we yeah. we often find ourselves scrolling on social but, media watching some silly but content personally i think uh we have this like uh social responsibility mm -hmm. of changing the people around us mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we can influence this like mm -hmm. hundreds of people that we're teaching right mm -hmm. uh, or the thousands of people uh, yeah. that are following us mm -hmm. uh, that's why like now i'm i'm strictly filtering all the information that I'm sharing uh, on YouTube, on Instagram, and on Telegram. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't stop posting. Mm -hmm. uh, I have some videos for Instagram that are being prepared now, like in mm -hmm. process. I have, I think, uh, like one or two podcasts uh, that haven't been uploaded yet. Uh, like it's, it's still in, in process. Uh, but now I'm so strict about this information that should be shared. And I'm, and I'm not going to follow these trends, this like uh, modern trends of Instagram and YouTube. I'm just going to um, stay stay serious about it. Mm -hmm. Very serious. Yeah, people may call me conservative, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay serious. Yeah. yeah. Social media, a big topic. Yeah. Now, what do you say we talk a little about your, your IELTS experience as well? Uh -huh. Since the majority of our viewers are IELTS students, uh -huh. would you like to share with them some useful tips for each aspect of IELTS? So normally we go in the order of reading, listening, writing, and speaking. So yeah, some quick tips would be great. Well, so what, what, what is your approach to reading or what do you recommend those students on 6.5 level do to go from that to 8.5 possibly 9 yeah um first of all well that may sound so silly mm -hmm. uh, they must they may that may sound so mm -hmm. uh, again conservative mm -hmm. of me mm -hmm. uh, they may sound so uh so strict mm -hmm. but uh, i need to tell this like that, that's my personal approach they should first of all stop using this instagram thing uh mm -hmm. instagram youtube they should stop watching these silly videos and uh mm -hmm. they should uh, actually explore these topics that are being discussed uh, like in, in IELTS, in TOEFL, in, in SAT, right? Mm -hmm. We have uh, more important things happening around us. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I personally started uh, this IELTS journey, um, the thing that, that changed my uh, like outlook, that changed my worldview is uh, reading passages. I, I, I love reading passages. Uh, and I loved reading uh, back then, like when I was 16, 17. And uh, from my first attempt, there was eight in reading. And the next time there was 8.5 and then 9, 9. 
Well, I love reading and not that's mainly because I know the secrets of IELTS reading. Uh, well, by the way, I, I finish uh, reading in less than 35 minutes for sure, like any reading. Give me any reading of IELTS, I can finish it, that in like in around 30 minutes. Not because I know the secrets of IELTS, not because I know how to do the uh, questions, not because I know uh, the question types well. This is just because uh, I, I love the information, uh, because IELTS reading passages are so interesting. They are so interesting. When you stop watching the silly videos on YouTube and Instagram and you, you become uh, a bit more interested in this serious topics. When you're interested in how, let's say, mind works, uh, I think that's, uh, that you can see that in your personal experience, people hate the topics about, about mind, about psychology, uh, when it comes in reading passages, right? But uh, if you're a bit more interested uh, to understand this information, not for the sake of finding the answers for, uh, for reading questions, just for the sake of understanding it, just for the sake of learning it, then you start loving. So uh, what, I, what I personally do with my students is uh, I ask them to read different articles from ELS or uh, I ask them to just set aside the questions of IELTS, the 13 questions. I ask them to read the passage and retell. Uh, we discuss these topics. We discuss them in depth. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this way only, uh, I think I can make these people uh, like more interested in these topics that are happening around us. Not only entertainment, not only this like games, right? Uh, and in this way, uh, when you when you read the passages for the sake of learning something, uh, IELTS questions are not difficult. Uh, time limit is not, is not a problem, right? And the same with listening. We don't do IELTS listening, we mainly do TOEFL listening. Uh, I play the audio file, I make them understand this academic audio for, for five, six minutes, I pause it and I ask them to retell it. And we discuss this topic. And then I give them the questions in listening and reading. Well, uh, I don't teach them IELTS. I just, like when it comes to listening and reading, I teach them how to understand what they're reading and listening. And I want them to discuss the things uh, with their peers or with me. And in this way, uh, I think we can build better comprehension. We can boost them, their, their vocabulary, right? Uh, and I think that's, that's the best approach for me. Like, it worked best for me. Like, I don't know about uh, some other, maybe there are more effective, more efficient approaches, but that's what I, what I choose to do. No, what you're describing sounds very much like a hands-on approach to uh, improving reading and listening, and I totally agree with you here on this. Yeah. So, And someone who is now stuck in like 6.5 and reading uh, should just step back Mm -hmm. Again, like uh, sh should go to the basics, mm -hmm. uh, should ask himself, uh, why am I reading this passage? Mm -hmm. What is this passage about? Uh, what I can get from this passage? Mm -hmm. uh, and I ask my students to write summaries. Mm -hmm. uh, I give them reading passages, I was reading mm -hmm. passages, and I say, uh, you should be reading it, uh, like imagining this is not IELTS and you don't have any questions after it. Forget about this reading questions. Read the passage, understand, write a summary, what you can get from this passage. Uh, how can this passage help you in, in your life, uh, for your future? Uh, how can you use, you use this knowledge? And then work with the questions. It's the same with listening. When it comes to writing and speaking, we mainly work with uh, myths mm -hmm. and band descriptors and what Pauline Cullen has to say. Uh, what do you like about this author, Paul and Colin? Well, why, why exactly this book? Because um, I think Paul and Colin is, is the most reliable person when mm -hmm. it comes to the criteria, when it comes to the uh, understanding Ben descriptors. I'm not going to say Paul and Colin's book is uh, so informative because there is mm -hmm. nothing about different topics that you, may, mm -hmm. that you may get in speaking and writing, right? This is just about the strategies, about do's and don'ts, right? 
Well, I think, uh, let's say, writing books of Pauli and Cullen are best when it comes to explaining what is, what is task response, what is coherence and cohesion, um, what is uh, high lexical resource and grammatical range of accuracy, right? Because most people come and think they should, uh, they should artificially use all the words that they are learning uh, from, from vocabulary books, right? Uh, no matter what context they have and mm -hmm. uh, no matter what prompts they have in the topic. Well, uh, that's why I think just Pauline Cullen uh, is the most reliable uh, source after Ben descriptors provid provided by IELTS itself uh, when it comes to teaching do's and don'ts of writing. But when it comes to the uh, vocabulary ideas uh, and uh, the practice, of course, they are like they all also uh, shouldn't be ignored. I see. And I also know you've been trying to get an overall nine. No, I'm, is, not, I'm not trying to do so. Is it, is it something you want to take off your bucket list? Uh, no, I have, I have never chased mm -hmm. uh, nine. I have never, I didn't even uh, plan to get 8.5 in my last attempt. Mm -hmm. This is Alicia who also, mm -hmm. uh, who like always signs me up for the exam. <laughs> well, uh, my, I took IELTS three times in a row mm -hmm. when I was an applicant. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't take any exam uh, in the next five years, I think. Mm -hmm. I took the test last year. Um, there was a five or six year break. Uh, I took the test just because Alicia asked me to, to take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, my previous attempt was like, there was overall eight. And that was in 2022. Yeah, that was in 2022, not last year, 2022. Um, well, in this 2022, 2023, and 2024, I took the test twice only. Mm -hmm. And both of these tests were registered by Alicia. Just because he asked me to, to take the test, right? Well, um, uh, my last attempt was, was pretty successful, but I never prepared for the yeah. exam. Uh, I just spent two hours. It was very impressive. You got half a point short of nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got eight in, eight in writing and 8.5 mm -hmm. in speaking. That was, mm -hmm. that was so yeah, close. unexpected. Yeah, that was very close. Yeah, yeah, that was so close. And uh, I never chased mm -hmm. nine or I never even planned to get 8.5. I was thinking mm -hmm. uh, that, would, that would again be like around eight or week 8.5. I never thought I would get uh, the last 8.5. Um, yeah, that's it. Like in after my uh, like this three attempts being an applicant, I took the test twice only, one in 2022 and one in 2023. I see. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're not that interested in taking the test. Um, no. Yeah. No, same no, here. Honestly. Same here. I kind of feel like I don't really have to sit the test as often as I used to do, but I'm going to be doing it anyway for professional reasons because yeah. I just want to make sure I'm not, I'm, I'm stay, still competitive, not losing my edge. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it's not going to be easy. It's, it's not going to, it's not a, it's, it's no walk in the park getting a nine again, but I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying a few more times, yeah. I guess, but I don't really know when. Yeah. I realized it's best to do it with a two, three months window. I actually tried setting a test every month and it was a bad idea because uh, I ended up getting all 8.5. So well, now I'm starting to realize it's best to do it once every three months. Maybe. How I personally see it is like mm -hmm. uh, you should spend all your time and energy mm -hmm. uh, for the test, right? Not at this point. With, no, I mean, uh, when you took the test every month. No, not really. I just show up and do the test. Didn't you have any preparations before the exam? I do with my students. Ah, yeah. So yeah. teaching is a form of preparation. So ah, when yeah, I'm teaching, yeah, I, see. I, I, see. I pretend I'm in the exam and I'm answering examiner questions. So I when I'm writing essay with my students, I pretend it's my exam question. Uh -huh. so it's like hitting two birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't have separate time for preparation. Yeah. So I'm I'm preparing for the exam as much as my stu students. Yeah. That's yeah. The thing oh with yeah. Me. Oh yeah. Yeah. I also. <laughs> The, the main thing that uh -huh. uh, keeps me from like taking the test again is uh, the time and energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to like 
personally, I want to spend this time and energy mm -hmm. on something oh, yeah. more valuable for the society, more valuable for the, for the I, public, right? I, w I cannot agree more. There are so many other things you can be doing with your life right now. And those yeah. people think that uh, getting a nine is the best way to contribute to society. You have no idea. There, there is so much more you can be doing with your life. And I only realized that after getting my nine. Yeah. It was it, it was a phase, and I'm glad I'm over it. I'm glad I'm I'm not chasing nine anymore. Yeah, yeah it was. It, I was kind of miserable at that point in my life. Anyway, so we're almost going to wrap it up. We're about to wrap it up, and I got a couple of questions I'd right. like to ask okay. you before we do that. Okay. Number one, what gets you up in the morning? Well, um, so if you were to put it all in one line. Or two lines. What what is something that gets you up in the morning? Well, the change. Changes. What kind of changes? No, I mean uh, this this motive change. Mm -hmm. It's like for now, that's my family. Mm -hmm. Now that's my family. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm doing my best mm -hmm. currently uh, to become a good father in the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, if I have, uh, let's say, uh, let's put it in this way. Mm -hmm. If you, if I had, let's say, a 20 or 30 day holiday off the work, what I would do, like after waking up, right? Mm -hmm. I would do my best to get as much information as possible to be a good father. Mm -hmm. And uh, like whatever I'm doing now, is like I'm, I'm putting all everything mm -hmm. like in this to become a better father mm -hmm. yeah that, that's what makes me up now yeah that, that sounds very very selfless i'd say that sounds very fatherish fatherish that's, that, yeah that's i don't have a child yet uh -huh. but um now I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so concerned about uh, this new chapter in my life mm -hmm. because uh, it's like you're going to decide everything from scratch now. You're going to mm -hmm. build a new building now. Like oh, maybe yeah. you had some mistakes, maybe you had some flows in the first uh -huh. one, but you have another chance. Mm -hmm. You have another chance. And I'm going to make it like I'm going to reach my full potential in, in the next page now. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm going to do my best. Uh, be the best dad ever in all walks of life oh yeah in all walks of life um i'm doing mm -hmm. sports mm -hmm. just for the sake of building discipline and making it a part of my regular day mm -hmm. uh before mm -hmm. before i have my first child mm -hmm. uh some some religious stuff mm -hmm. uh something about uh, self-development right mm -hmm. Like everything that I'm doing now mm -hmm. is directed at being uh, a better father and construct this construct this new building uh, from scratch, mm -hmm. uh, trying to reach my full potential. As a dad, got yeah. it. And what advice would you give your 16-year-old self? So if you had a time machine and could go back in time, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let me think. Let me think. Um, Don't go to Wyatt. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> Don't go I to Wyatt. I wouldn't go to Wyatt. Yes. Um, yeah, going abroad. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, going abroad. I would. I would certainly come back. Uh -huh. But uh, I would do my bachelor's in the US or somewhere else like mm -hmm. in Canada but I would never yeah apply to Wyatt <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad though guys it's not that bad but uh, we could do more right yes absolutely we can do better like I would I'd like to live mm -hmm. in Uzbekistan and mm -hmm. uh, now I'm living my best life mm -hmm. I, can, I can say I'm living my life to its full but uh I'm pretty sure I'll be having a better me if I had done my bachelor's degree in, in the U.S. or in Canada or somewhere else. Uh, mm -hmm. I would be, maybe I'll be doing the same thing. 
Yeah. But they will be a better version of me, right? Yeah, for sure. Because you'd have simply more experience. You'd be more self-aware, mature, yeah. and better at uh, managing people, yeah. and more independent and confident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this whole experience of living abroad independently, away from your folks, uh, is a perfect opportunity for anyone actually to uh, to d- to develop, to yeah. build themselves. Yeah. I don't think why it helped mm-hmm. uh, any of us mm-hmm. that I know, like uh, this circle of Bukharians uh-huh. uh, who graduated from Wyatt in 2021, uh, that didn't help to reach our full potential, any of us. I mean, you could say that about pretty much every university, even if you're someone who's who's gone to Ivy League school, Harvard or Cambridge, and if you're one of those slackers or if you're don't take yourself seriously of course you would n- end up not making the most of your university experience yeah i think yeah. it doesn't really have s- as much to do with the university as it does with the student attitude and priorities yeah but we yeah. had uh, like what how i say it is like mm-hmm. uh, when we were uh, this like 17 or 18 years old mm-hmm. we had so many choices mm-hmm. and we chose uh, the easy path the, the, the yeah the easiest path the guaranteed path we ch- yes. chose yeah, yeah, path was, of least resistance yeah yeah the same but it turned out not bad i guess that's not bad uh-huh. but could have could have been could have been better yes yeah, could have been better for sure all right i guess that's all for today it was so much fun having you on the podcast today and talking to you yeah. and i feel uh, enlightened i learned a lot from you in terms of social media managing people and I, I i can say it was a blast and i hope you feel the same way about today's yeah, yeah, so, same, show same, yeah. so uh, would you uh, do you have any final comments or remarks you'd like to make before well, we wrap this um, up the thing is i, I love this podcast oh, like, nice. uh, uh-huh. as i told you i loved all the episodes of this mm-hmm. podcast and um uh, i like how this conversation flow goes mm-hmm. like um, when you feel uh, the other part, part right, and uh, I would talk for hours like, uh, in this way, and uh, I would be so honored uh, if I'm invited again. For sure, for yeah, sure. Like, uh, round two, round three, round four. We're going to have a few more rounds with yeah. Mr. Behrouz, guys. Uh, yeah, or maybe uh, you should have some uh, rubrics, right, uh-huh. uh, about different topics. And uh, we can have this, this like discussions about different topics, right? More often. Yes, they will be so. fun. Yeah, they will be fun. I love this conversation. Sure. Mm-hmm. I loved uh, how it all mm-hmm. went. Thank you very much for inviting. Absolutely. You're welcome. So if you guys want to know more about Mr. Behrouz, please check the links in the description box below. And if you liked our content, please don't forget to hit the thumbs, thumbs up and subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you have any guests you'd like to see on the podcast, please let us know in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. We'll